but it is not enough to simply find the transitional fossils. They also must satisfy the sequence test. That is, the ages of the fossils must match the progression from primitive form to more modern form. Dating fossils is a relatively straightforward process, using several methods to cross-check the ages determined. Some care must be taken to ensure the dates considered are the earliest appearance of each fossil since there is no reason a transitional form must go extinct before a modern form appears. And there is no reason a successful form cannot endure for long periods of time with very little change. The modern crocodile can boast of 100 million years, and the cockroach, which has been around for 280 million years. But back to sequencing. If we consider our reptile to bird example and date the intermediate forms, we find that they are in precisely the right order. A wider view also passes the sequence test. Prokaryotes appear first, followed in order by sponges and starfish fish, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. We will return to this point later. In the examination of structure of organisms, we frequently find organs that either have no function or have a modified function completely out of character with the structure. For example, Wings are very complex structures specifically adapted for flying. So why do ostriches have wings? Ostrich wings are certainly not useless to the ostrich, but they are certainly useless as wings. The vestigial blind eyes of the mole and cave-dwelling fish and salamanders are easily explained only by reference to previous ancestors who had need of eyes. Snakes are clearly the descendants of four-legged reptiles. Most pythons still carry vestigial pelvises hidden beneath their skin. These useless pelvises are not even attached to the vertebrae, but simply float in the abdominal cavity. Many legless lizards carry rudimentary vestigial legs underneath their skin, undetectable from the outside. Dandelions reproduce without fertilization, yet they retain flowers and produce pollen, useless to the dandelion, but not to its ancestors. Many flightless beetles still carry their fully formed wings of their ancestors, but carry them underneath fused wing covers. Human herbivore ancestors are responsible for our useless wisdom teeth and our vermiform appendix and our tailbone is a developmental remnant tying us to our ancestors who had external tails. There are no vestigial structures that were not previously functional in an ancestor. All vestigial organs make sense only in the framework of evolution. And of course we do not find vestigial organs that argue against evolution no nipples in amphibians, or vestigial feathers on mammals. No primates carry vestigial horns or degenerate wings. We do not find arthropods with leftover backbones. No snakes have wing parts, and no humans have gizzards. If creatures evolve from one another, there should be a geographical trail. Marsupials are a good example. With few exceptions, marsupials inhabit Australia. The possum and some South American species are explained by continental drift. South America and Australia used to be connected and split apart only after marsupials evolved. Conversely, placental mammals were virtually absent in Australia until we introduced them there. 
South America, Africa, and Australia share lungfishes, ratite birds like ostriches and emus, and toothed frogs, all of which occur nowhere else. Humans' closest living relatives are the great apes, indigenous to Africa. So it is no real surprise to find that our own origins are there as well. A test closely related to vestigial sections addresses similarities in structure in spite of differences in the functions of that structure. If species evolve from another species, the new species must often adapt and modify existing body parts to do different tasks. If we examine the bone structure in primate hands and bat wings and bird wings and pterosaur wings and whale flippers and penguin flippers and horse legs and mole forelimbs and frog legs, we will find they all have the same bones in the same relative positions. The standard tree diagram easily demonstrates why these different species have the same structure. That is, they have common ancestors who possess these structures. The fossil records again confirms this conclusion as it readily provides a chronological progression of intermediate forms. We can occasionally find explanations for what appears to be bad design by tracing the source of body structure to our ancestors. The mammalian respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts cross one another, so we cannot swallow and breathe simultaneously. Why does this less than optimal anatomy exist? An ancient ancestor from the Devonian, a lungfish, swallowed air to breathe. And the bladder that held the air was a precursor to our lungs. Humans have inherited this original design with the mouth connected to both the digestive and respiratory system, even though it now causes problems. <laughs> 